You're listening to the most authentic place in sports. It's the Sports Headline Show. Here are your hosts, Sean Davis and Warner Sanker. Welcome back. See? Yeah, there we go. See, we were both trying to do it. That's how excited we are to kick off the top half of our NFL in-depth 2022 power rankings as the B. See, we are we were too excited. We, we didn't know who was gonna kick things off. You know, I wanted to do it, Warren wanted to do it, I guess, but we're here at number 16 in our power rankings is the New England Patriots. Um, appreciate you all for hopping in here. So what we're going to do, as always, we're going to take a look at the roster, uh, position group by position group, and uh, rank how we rank it, talk about how we rank it, excuse me. And then to end this episode, we're, we do have special guests on. Uh, we've had them on past, actually, the last episode we had a special guest on. Make sure you guys go check that one out. We've had one on, I feel like we've had one for another episode, the Giants episode with Brandon. Uh, but for this episode, our special guest is going to be on after so after you guys listen through this part where we uh, talk about the Patriots uh, roster and their coaching staff, make sure you guys stick around for our interview uh, after with Tim. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, so I hope you guys enjoy that. But let's dive into this Patriots team here, Warner. It's going to rank 16th. And I don't know about you. I think this is the highest you can go with this Patriots team as of right now, I think. While I, I can say I, I like the Patriots heading into the season, one, I think the AFC is too competitive. And two, I think there are some things that really have to go right for this team to be that lock playoff team that I think some people believe they could be. Um, so, w- Warner, just before we get started, what are your overarching thoughts on this Patriots team? Yeah, and I think our uh, our graphics on the offensive and defensive strengths and weaknesses will really – crystal clear like give you give you guys the picture but they lack some up end talent in the secondary obviously they've had some standout corners they had Darrell Revis years back arguably could argue that it was uh, not prime Darrell Revis but not prime Darrell Revis is still a damn good corner Stefan Gilmore of course had a defensive player of the year season with them JC Jackson the last few years as well uh, so they've had some really really good corners and um, after this Malcolm Butler injury they their, their corner room is kind of depleted um but they've got a <laughs> they've got some phenomenal safeties so many of them too they go easily four deep at safety um honestly two of their safeties you'll see it here with adrian phillips and jabril peppers might end up and are probably going to end up playing a good bit of linebacker as well um of course matthew judon had a really good season last year i think he's going to continue to grow in this belichick defense that really is good at creating pressure as well. Um, So they may not have uh, that really that number one, um, you know, edge rusher, say like defensive end or interior rusher. Um, But they have Matthew Judon, who I'd say is a low tier number one, mid tier number one guy um, combined with a plethora of other pieces that are good at rushing the passer and only get amplified due to Bill Belichick. Really that's the, that's the defensive side of the ball really. Good, uh, average to good um, players, except except for, again, safety, um, with Bill Belichick just amplifying the defense. With the offensive side of the ball, um, you're looking at, you know, Mac Jones coming into year two, uh, hopefully taking steps in that that process. Um, A really good running back room. James White did retire, but you just drafted a rookie, I believe, in the third round. We'll get to him in a minute. Uh, that, that I'm really looking forward to see uh, seeing in the receiving attack. Obviously, getting Devontae Parker is a huge get for you. And, I mean, I'm segueing right into additions and departures, so let's just start talking about those. Um, you know, you, you get Devontae Parker, um, <clears throat> Mac Wilson, Malcolm Butler obviously is hurt, and Jabril Peppers. But I think they did – they lost a lot of talent. Obviously, Josh McDaniels, they've got Mac, Matt Patricia calling plays right now. Not really looking forward to that, um, you know. He couldn't succeed as a defensive head coach, so why would he excel as an offensive play caller? I, I don't, I don't get that. But um, you know, that's a that's a TBD, I guess. You lost Shaq Mason. I think the offensive line is still in a good good spot. Ted Karras as well, um, and then Dante Hightower, Kyle Van Noy, and J.C. Jackson. Big losses to the defense, especially considering that Malcolm Butler again cannot play the season as he's injured. Yes, uh, and he talked about. 
Josh McDaniels, losing Hellman. I think we would feel or I, I would have more reservations and be more confident about this Patriots team if Josh McDaniels was still the offensive play caller. Uh, Bill yeah. Belichick, it's going to be a combination of Belichick, Joe freaking Judge, and Matt Patricia calling plays here offensively. Um, so I, I, I guess I trust Belichick, but um, if he's delegating the the role to one of these other guys, then I'm definitely going to feel less confident about this uh, offensive coaching staff and, and the play calling that will be implemented here. But um, I guess we can kind of segue into the offensive coaching scheme because that's what I'm getting at here. Um, yeah. They're going to rank uh, 20. Nah, crap. That's not accurate. Um, they're going to rank 18th with a 17.20 grade um, here coming in 18th again uh offense we're gonna rank 19th overall that is accurate um and, and again I, I think you you lost a surefire top 10 play caller in football in josh mcdaniels and, and what mcdaniels would do a lot of times i think he just made things easier on uh mac jones you know allowing him to get the ball out of his hands really, really quickly. I think he's, he, he did a phenomenal job, but they was easily the best rookie quarterback in terms of not holding on to the ball forever. Um, that's probably the worst things about what Trevor Lawrence, Fields, and Zach Wilson. Most all rookies, honestly. Line. I mean, in college, they yeah. can hold on. They're so much athletic and so better. These top quarterbacks are so better, so much better than their competition. They can kind of dance around, stay in the pocket. You know, a lot of these guys are coming from – bigger schools or smaller schools that still have a good offensive line for the competition they play. And um, also, you know, receivers that are always getting open. And, and again, their, their arms are usually too much for everybody else to handle. Mac Jones, not so much though, because he did play in that sec. We've seen the defensive linemen drafted out of Georgia per se. And uh, you know, LSU, Derek Stingley at LSU, a lot of good corners, a lot of good defenses overall from that sec. So Mac Jones really did, you know, he, he did have some really good receivers. I think all of his receivers, his main receivers have been drafted in the first round, but um, you know, he, he had a, he had a good offensive line, but it wasn't so good against the competition to where he could hold on to the ball forever. Like a guy like, you know, Justin Fields would have been able to at Ohio state. Yeah. And, and I think at his core, I still think a lot of the same concepts, even <laughs> though um, Josh McDaniels is gone. I, th- I still think we're going to be seeing, a very similar Patriots offense to what we've seen since Brady was there, you know, just a quick hitting passing game um, in your drop back passing game. You know, you're going to try to shut some, some stuff down the field, uh, maybe some levels concepts and stuff like that to allow for Mac Jones to get through his reads rather easily. Let's talk about Mac Jones. He's They're going to rank 19th for this quarterback room here. That sounds exactly. low, but honestly, don't take that as a slight to Mac Jones. I think that for one, there is really, really good quarterback play. For two, he's towards the he's around the same tier of guys, if not in the same tier of guys like Ryan Tannehill, Jameis Winston, right now. Um, in, in terms I mean, if of you just look at, if you just look at the grade, it's an even seven. We think he's the average of average quarterbacks in today's NFL. And again, <laughs> Patriots fans. He's still the top rated, I'd say, uh, year one through three quarterback um, in in our in our rankings. Exactly. Um, now, now with Mac, I think the biggest thing, and I, I honestly am not sure how high Mac would ever really climb up these rankings because I think he does have a limited upside. Um, I, I think, and literally, the, the mock for our I mean, uh, player comp was Jimmy Garoppolo, and not because you know we wanted to. That was the, you know, the pick the media was giving. I feel like that's the obvious one here. The closest comparison is Jimmy Garoppolo in the sense. Maybe, maybe I actually think we said a better version of Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, but I, I think you look at some of the comparisons that they had. I think it, it still rings true. I, I think Mac mm-hmm. last year showed he does have a, a decent arm, but I think he, he does struggle. And the offense was not at his best last season when they had to push the ball vertically down the field. And, and maybe that's something that Matt Patricia can add to the offense. But I, I granted, he didn't have the best receivers last year. At, it did bring in Devontae Parker. Um, so, I mean, let's see if they can stretch the ball down the field a little bit more often this year. You did get Tyquan Thornton as well. 
Um, so they, they did a better job at adding weapons and giving Mac Jones more things to, to play with offensively. Uh, but I think he, he is a rookie. He was a rookie. So obviously he still made some mistakes. He wasn't a Joe Burrow or Justin Herbert after year one where you're like, holy, holy shit. Like the, they clean up the, this one, one or two mistakes. They are a top five quarterback. Um, one, I'm not sure Mac Jones will ever be a top five quarterback. And two, I think it's a, a few more mistakes than just one. Um, but I, I do think the stuff is there. I do think he gets through his reads. Well, I do think he he does a nice job of, I guess, sensing the pressure and moving within the pocket. Um, mm-hmm. Warner, what are your thoughts on Mac Jones in here and in, in the Patriots with Mac Jones? I think you summed it up very well. And I just I, I want to add, again, bringing in Devontae Parker, Nelson Aguilar is still on the roster. He ran a 4-4 coming out. Tyquan Thornton ran a 4-2-8. I mean, they are going to get separation. And uh, Devonta Parker isn't necessarily a separation guy, but I think that might suit Mac Jones a little bit better um, because of his experience and also the the way he can attack 50-50 balls. It's really a it's really a, a 65-35 ball when you're throwing it up to Devonta Parker. And um, – that's going to allow Mac Jones to get away with some underthrows so he doesn't have to worry about throwing the ball too hard or, or harder than he can and either missing his spot, uh, having the ball hang up in the air too long, or overthrowing the receiver. And all three of those uh, types of throws, the, all three of those mistakes are prone to get intercepted by NFL safety. So I think that's going to help him out a lot too. Um, honestly, as a segue into his receiving weapons, is uh, Devonta Parker, Jacoby Myers, really like him, and Kendrick Bourne with uh, Aguilar as the four and Thornton as the five. I mean, I think it's uh, – you, you combine that with two solid tight ends and Pierre Strong Jr., I think you've got a very nice uh, core of receivers there, hence the uh, above average seven and a half grade. I think they're just lacking that number one – you know, I, I, I like I like personally number one receivers who can who, – who are like – all pro separators, guys like Devontae Adams, Keenan Allen, Stephon Diggs. Um, and, and, you know, Jacoby Myers is probably the most separator of all the separators like in this receiving room. But um, in terms of just short intermediate routes, getting open quickly, being that reliable target, if you need a third and five conversion, you know, he can beat somebody on a slant and out a little, you know, a hitch or something like that. Um, and, and, you know, He's just not quite that receiver one uh, quite yet in, in his career. Yes, and uh, we did, I believe, botched uh, Jacoby Myers' name, so that is on our part there. But Jacoby Myers last season was spectacular, um, nearly had a 1,000-yard season. And he was definitely their best receiver last year. It just felt like they, for some reason, they just did not want to throw him the ball near the red zone. He only had two touchdown catches last season. Uh and could not. He was just short of missing that hundred yard mark. Mark. Jacoby Myers is spelled right. No, it's not. It's a J A K, O B I. Um. Yeah. Mm, I don't think it is. Hold on. It, it is. Oh yeah, you're right. But um, yep. it's fine. But um, I, 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 man, you have a lot of depth here in this receiving room. Um, Ty Montgomery's more of a receiver at this point. Your tight ends, I still think you have a a, a group of really nice and solid tight ends. Johnny Smith, we're a little bit higher on him. Coming into New England, um, I think the the thing with Johnu Smith is uh, he just doesn't suit the offense as well as Hunter Henry does. Uh, Mac Jones' skill set, Josh McDaniels' play style, um, you know, he's just that really athletic tight end that can push the ball down the field. And as you said, with Mac Jones, they struggled a bit pushing the ball down the field. Um, and Hunter Henry's more of that uh, versatile possession type tight end that you can just throw the ball to. You're getting to catch. He's not doing much after the catch. But uh, you're getting a catch, you're getting some tough yards, and, and you're moving on. Also, I think uh, Henry's a better red zone target as well. Henry's probably the better red zone target, and like you said, uh, brilliantly, there are one. Or Henry kind of fits the scheme a little bit more in this short to intermediate passing game and let him get some stuff after the catch where uh, John U. Smith, you're more looking for him on the, the deep crossers and, and stretching the field vertically, which just didn't really fit either Josh McDaniels coaching style and his play calling or Mac Jones. Uh, and that's why John Smith had the best of seasons, but he's still a, a, a fine tight end that I think in the right scheme could be really, really good. Um, he I, I don't know. I think they overpaid for him, honestly. Um, 
Uh yeah, so, for, for for what well, four for what years, he's doing, fifty million with thirty one guaranteed, and his previous career high was forty one catches on only sixty five targets for four fifty. I mean, I don't know. I think that's a bit of an overpay. Uh, but I, I really do. I, I really do hope that Smith ends up having that breakout season. He definitely can. He is athletic. No, he gets it enough to do it. They overpaid. Yeah, I, I would agree though. All righty, and then uh, Warner. I know you were really, really excited about Pierre Strong Jr. kind of replacing um, uh, James White, who unfortunately did retire. So they're gonna lose him, but I think Pierre Strong Jr. will be just fine. You did draft him, so. I guess is that too big of a concern there? Um, but uh, Warner, what do you do? You have any in depth thoughts rather on Pierre Strong Jr.? I think it was great value. He was a fourth round pick um, out of South Dakota State. He um, he's a little bit on the older side, uh, being a redshirt senior, but he he's a he's a really quick back. Um, showed good receiving instincts there, and um, you know I, I think that you know you've had guys Shane Vereen, uh, James White even Rex Burkhead um, being those quick shifty um, receiving backs that, that this team has really relied on and, and thrived with. Um, and Pierre Strong Jr. I think is that he ran a four, three, seven coming out of college. Um, it, he's just a, a, an athletic guy, a quick guy, and he, he showed good receiving instincts. I think that's all you're wanting from a first year uh, fourth round running back that, that um, is, I think, primed to step into that James White role. Yeah, and then uh, let's give Kendrick Bourne some credit, too, uh, as your wide receiver three. I think that's a luxury, honestly. And then also, it felt like every single, every single target he did wind up getting, he caught. He only got yeah. 70 targets, but he caught 55 of them for 800 yards and five touchdowns last season. So, um, clearly, he has honestly, a- if I can do a quick prediction here, I think you're going to end up rolling on the 53 – with Devontae Parker, Jacoby Myers, Kendrick Bourne, Nelson Aguilar, Tyquan Thornton, and then uh, probably Lil, Will Jordan Humphrey, and then either Trey Nixon or Christian Wilkerson if you want to carry seven receivers. But uh, I think Humphrey's definitely making the roster um, with his his special teams play. You know Bill loves his special teams, guys. Exactly right on, Warner. Let's move on here and let's talk about – this running back room that is really dynamic and it's got to rank ninth here. Um, and what, one of the things the scheme does well is, you know, just opening up rushing lanes for these running backs. And you had, I think you had two guys that could very legitimately on separate teams have been a thousand yard rushes or if they were the, if they were the number one back on this team and they only yeah. had one back could be a thousand yard rushers, Damian Harris, who, I mean, he, he rushed for, 929 yards, nearly a thousand. If he played another game or so, he, he definitely would have cleared that benchmark. He had he 15 touchdowns. Is that correct? I, I believe he so. Missed. He missed two. He missed two games, but just a, a really, really good running back who had 15 touchdowns last season. And, and they rely on him a lot, and, and they rely on the duo rather. Uh, yeah, Both I want to of these the guys duo. averaging over four and a half yards a carry. You love to see it, especially with Stevenson. I mean. Once Harris being a leaves, rookie, and I love Stevenson yeah. coming out. He, yeah, yeah, he's going. Harris is going into year four. Stevenson coming into year two, perfectly primed to replace Damian Harris. There, there's no way he gets a contract extension from the Patriots. Exactly, unless Ramondre Stevenson just falls off the face of the earth. But well, they, they really he's in his hip or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, but they really relied on the both of <laughs> these good. guys. And good. I was just saying, not um, Will, because I would hate for that to happen. Yeah. Um, but they really relied on the both of these guys. They kind of went by a who's the hot hand type of guy. You saw kind of more towards the end of the year, they would rely on Ramondre Stevenson. But, you know, like, for example, this Jaguars game, Stevenson, 19 carries to um, to Damian Harris is nine. Um, or, or the Bills, where they lost – um, well, actually, he didn't play that game. But so, like, if you lose one of these guys, I think you are okay because uh, if Damian Harris goes down, you're still looking at an above-average running back room. I don't think in terms of production, you're going to be losing too, too much here, especially now you have Pierre Strong Jr. in the backfield as well. And they're going to get a lot of open lanes because this offensive line is still one of the best in football. Trent Brown, Cole Strange, David Andrews, who's just a rock, and I think it's maybe underrated. 
Um, Michael Owenu, I believe, who was a rookie last season. I believe, I want to say he was a fourth round pick. Um, so, and then Isaiah Wynn still on that right side. Um, this offensive line is elite, uh, ranking top three for us. And I, I think the biggest thing really Six is that. Round pick. Six round pick six, in 2020. Yeah, so it, which by the way is is so on brand with the Patriots. We were talking uh, about we were just talking about I forget what episode it was, but teams that develop and just churn out. It was the Eagles. We named the Packers a lot. This Patriots team as well. I I don't I think we glossed over them, but they churn out linemen. Yeah, and, and like how many teams can lose a top five guard? Now, granted, guards are not nearly as important, but they lost a top five guard last offseason, Joe Tooney. They drafted Michael and Wenu, and they are like, you know what? We are okay. Um, I will say the depth on this offensive line is a little shaky. I think if yeah. something mm-hmm. goes down, I, I guess if one of your tackles go down, Justin Haran, I do uh, does have some experience, um, and Trey Brown does have some uh, <clears throat> injury concerns, so you you are prepared um, for that. But uh, he it, got it, hurt uh, last year, did he not? Yeah. So, and Justin Ron does have some playing time and playing, playing experience. So, if an injury happens on your tackle, one of your tackles, I guess you're fine for a couple of weeks. But if an injury happens to your interior lineman, like David Andrews, Michael Owenu, um, then yikes, um, because I think the depth is the biggest problem with this offensive line and probably why they're not number one, because I think you could argue one through five, they go pound for pound with the, the Philadelphia Eagles, um, one through five. Now, I think the Eagles probably have the best overall lineman on either offensive line, but um, the, the the depth is definitely what's concerning me. Um, Cole Stranger, rookie in the first round. Um, our our, our buddy, our uh, yeah, buddy I, Tim was I, I, was uh, just to say lightly pissed when they went with Cole Strange in the first round, but I, I think he I think he even said this as well when he kind of calmed down and we was able to digest a little bit more. You have to give Bill the benefit of the doubt here, although it is a reach. It's a not reach. as a first round pick. <laughs> the Patriots have not had a good track record on fair, first fair round enough, picks over enough. the last few years. Fair enough, but, but as an offensive lineman, maybe that balances some of it out. I, I was just going to talk about Strange because I do think they reached for him, and if he doesn't end up panning out, then uh, basically a wasted first round pick. And again, you just talked on it. Interior line depth not good. Not good. Hashtag analysis. But um, I think Cole Strange, year one, will be one of the – I mean, he'll be comparable and, and be a really good run blocker on, on that offensive line. I think he needs to uh, refine some of his pass protecting techniques. But you have Michael Wendell. You have David Andrews, who – or who uh, David Andrews' case is a veteran in the NFL, should be able to help uh, groom Cole Strange. And I do think guard was a need for this team. Um, but I, I think they reach to get Cole Strange. But um, I, I I mean I think he'll if Cole Strange turns out to be an All Pro left guard, wouldn't be surprised. Right? Call call me call me fooled. All right, don't call me fooled. I would not be surprised at the slightest if Cole Strange became an All Pro. But um, let's talk about the strengths and weaknesses of this offense. Uh, the playmaker depth here, I, I, and we talked about it. If you look at your running back room, you have. Uh, a top seven duo in football, or Ramondre Stevenson and um, Damian, Damian Harris. Do your and running back depth. Throw Pierre Strong in there too. Throw I mean, Pierre Strong in there. Receiving back, but I think he can do some damage rushing. Playmakers and, overall. Though. We talked about the receivers going five deep. Their tight ends go damn near four deep. I mean, they've got some playmakers on this squad, and and they also have di- diverse skill sets. With Bourne Myers being more separators, Devonta Parker being the number one, um, kind of do it all guy, but big skills at 50-50 balls. You've got your speed guys in Thornton and Aguilar. Um, you've got, you know, your your vertical tight end and your possession tight end with John New Smith and Hunter Henry. You've got your receiving backs and your rushing backs and Stevenson and Harris and, and Pierre Strong. I think it, they really complement each other well. And, um, and we see it on the defense. Bill Belichick likes to put players that excel at one certain thing in that situation. And I think that'll help on the offense as well, um, just in in kind of helping the offense flow. Yeah, and then uh, weaknesses for this offense, questionable QB slash play caller combo. I guess this is more of a, a slight towards the play calling than Mac Jones. Um, but 
Mac Jones. I think it, it were if Mac Jones, worse comes worse, I think he's the 19th best quarterback in football next season. Um, may, or maybe like 20, 21 or whatever. I, th- I think yeah. he's around this range. I don't think he's going to fall off and be like the 30th best quarterback or whatever. I think worse comes to worse. He has a bad season. He's still around this range. But you're obviously hoping for some positive growth from Mac Jones. Uh, the offensive line depth is, again, we kind of just touched on it, a big concern, um, which is why I, get, I, I, I think I'm fine with them going guard because you did need a guard and, and, and you went to go get a Cole Strange. But the problem like was the it was a reach. And, yeah, like Warner was saying, just not in the yeah. first round. Um, yeah, that's going to be the, their strengths and weaknesses. Now let's dive into this defense here. When the last episode we saw our first first overall ranking, uh, the Patriots do not rank first defensively, if that's what you're thinking. But they are going to rank first for defensive coaching and scheme. Bill Belichick Dude, is still – Imagine real quick, real quick, before we get into that, imagine if they picked George Karloftis at 29 instead of Cole Strange. Yes, why? Mm-hmm. Why, Bill? Why? No, yeah. now I have a gripe with you. because I it, it was Edge, Edge, and then Daxton Hill, who's probably the best safety in the draft, if not second, and then Lewis Sign, who's probably the third best safety in the draft. They don't need more safeties, but if they would have taken George Karloftis there. Oh, my God, Daxton Hill been, and Bill Belichick right. would have been a crime. Bill Bel- Oh, man, I'm surprised they didn't, honestly. And then if you look at the second round, don't mean to harp on the greatest GM of all time. Um, but second round, Roger McCreary goes for the third pick in the second round. Jalen Petrie, Petrie, um, the fifth pick of the second. Kyler Gordon, the seventh pick. I mean, Andrew Booth, the tenth. We talked about how much we want to see Andrew Booth and or Kobe Bryant on this team. I think it's disappointing they got neither of them. But let's Warner, move on. You, you, you made me pissed. This is the second year in a row. The Chiefs are just gonna let just they're just gonna get a stud fall right they're in their lap. They're just gonna lap. luck into a stud, yeah. They're just gonna luck into a stud. <laughs> Josh Myers. <clears throat> I hate it here. Um, anyway, um, Bill Belichick ranking first here for his defensive coaching and scheme, running this three four man heavy scheme that again on the outside and, and in your secondary really relies on and, and allows your which is why I think you see corners that have any amount of ball skills and coverage ability to have breakout years and career years in New England. Yes, I'm talking J.C. Jackson. Yes, I'm talking Stephon Gilmore, who honestly, and as a Chargers fan, I can admit this, I don't think J.C. Jackson's ever going to be, or production-wise at least, he's not going to have nearly as amount of the same season in production with the Chargers this year than he had with Bill Belichick. For one, I don't think we need him to do that. I think what we'll, what we'll, our scheme is going to ask him is going to be completely different. Um, I mean, but what, he, he had three, five, nine, and eight. Where exactly his, his interception numbers. That's insane. Twenty five through his first four years. That's just that's crazy and honestly unsustainable. But, it's unsustainable. Um, um, you're also also I will say, Chargers are not playing the Jets, Dolphins. Twice a year. So. They're not. They're not. Paid, they don't get the luxury of playing Zach Wilson and Tua Tagovailoa <laughs> twice a year. Um, so fair enough. But on the outside, you're you're really relying and allowing your corners to be aggressive and and opportunistic. Um, and he gets to do some creative stuff with the safeties and the rest of his D bays. And then up front, he gets Even really creative. And, and edge. We're gonna. I'm gonna touch on Josh Uche as well. Um, as a you know his hybrid edge. I mean. He's got the most complicated, hard to understand scheme, but it works. Like a lot of coaches will try to get too complicated, and it just won't work because it's dumb and overly, overly complex. Bill Belichick's works to a T. Every freaking play. I mean, he's just he's the greatest of all time. No, he's not. I'm joking. I'm joking, guys. Pat Pat's fans, so come after me. Jokes. Um, and then, like Warner was mentioning, <laughs> oh boy, Warner, he put the camera on me now. Um, but no, up, up front as well, he does a great job scheming things up using stunts and stuff of that nature. That's why the Pats, while they do have a really good pass rusher now, um, they've never really needed one, especially in recent years. They don't need um, this number one pass rusher. It's just going to win his one on ones every single time. And they don't need that because Bill's going to scheme open you, uh, some. Clear shots to the quarterback. So and, uh, and, let's and, you know, the quarterback not or the offensive lineman. They're they're going to end up calling the wrong protection, just because of 
the, again, the stunts, but also the linebackers and safeties that will bring on blitzes as well. Let's dive in here to this pass rush group. Here is going to rank 19th here in football, uh, but and then we actually have our first uh, hybrid edge role specifically here. So, Warren, how about you dive into this pass rush room here? Yeah, um, re- really looking forward to Christian Barmore in year two. Um, I think that he's going to be an exciting player uh, for the Pats. But um, Barmore is probably your your best interior uh, lineman of um, uh, pass rush wise. Um, he only started in two games last year, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be too worried about that. Matt Judon obviously is a stud. Um, Dietrich Wise as well will play some edge. Um, but you're, they, they, so they, we, they run that, they run that three, four, but, um, instead of both your outside linebackers, say like the chargers or like the Packers, um, instead of both those guys being edge rushers and, and, you know, pass rushers mainly, uh, you're looking at Bosa Mack or, um, uh, Rashawn Gary and I guess Preston Smith, um, instead of, instead of those guys being just edge rushers, you have Matthew Judon, who's that edge rusher, and then you're going to have Dietrich Wise, who's that 3-4 end, play the other edge. Um, but you're also going to have Josh Uche, who's an athletic outside linebacker, He's who's going to play some edge but also drop and play a more hybrid um, inside backer role as well. Um, honestly, looking back on it, I think Clay Matthews would have excelled in that role <laughs> just because of how much how good he was at playing the edge but also the inside um, way back when, but that's, that's the exciting part. Uche hasn't really broken out yet, but I will say, I believe he's going into year three, um, year three in this, um, in this Patriots. <laughs> Let me check that out real quick. But, um, in, in the, uh, defense and, um, that really, yeah, he was actually, he was a 20, uh, 20 pick. So, um, going into his third year, Really excited to see what he can do in year three as as that hybrid edge. And, you know, that, that lets Belichick be able to send five or six uh, on a zero. Say say they're sending a, uh, an inside backer or a safety along with Uche. Or they can uh, drop Uche and, and he can play, uh, you know, man up or in zone or QB spy, you know, whatever, whatever he needs to do on, on the certain play. It lets him get it lets, – it lets Belichick get so creative – on the stunts and, and who he's sending as uh, pressures um, to who he's sending to rush the quarterback. It get, lets him get so creative in that. That's what really makes their pass rush stand out def- despite the lack of um, kind of name recognition you get with, with the pass rushers on this line. Yeah. And, and one of the depth pieces I really am excited to talk about and really excited to see this team and how he plays this year. Uh, I think he really play if there was an injury um, but Ronnie Perkins, if something were to happen to Dietrich Wise, uh, somebody that I really liked coming out of Oklahoma that you know has great speed uh, off the edge, just a speed rusher that can get to the quarterback that I think could win a one-on-one with his speed, um, just has to add more uh, pass rush moves to his, to his uh, pass rush tool belt and uh, really convert that speed to power. But like Warner said, I, I, I think we really do like this pass rush room here, even though it does rank 19th. Uh, and again, Christian Barmore heading into year two is going to be incredible in this offense. He was our number one interior defensive lineman coming out of that draft class. And uh, I mean, how could you not have him at 19, uh, the number one interior defensive lineman coming out? The dude's a stud. And uh, yeah, I, I really, really, really like Christian Barmore. And uh, he's going to be something special with Bill Belichick. But diving in here to this, secondary is going to rank 21st in football but again ranked with a 7.30 grade they just have depth on depth on depth honestly but it's just not yeah, a lot of hurt. i highlighted him just so he didn't get overlooked i mean he's a stud kyle duggar stud adrian phillips stud and obviously devin mccourty They've got so much versatility as a say i mean duggar phillips and peppers can all play linebacker and safety at a, at a high level, you know, and, and you combine that with Jawan Bentley, Mac Wilson, and Raekwon McMillan, they've got a lot of depth, except for really the corners um, with Jalen Mills, Terrence Mitchell. Jonathan Jones is really good, but um, 
It's really unfortunate that Malcolm Butler got hurt. Yeah, especially now. So uh, they, they will be relying on Terrence Mitchell now, probably on the outside. And uh, outside of that, you're looking at Miles Bryan, uh, Marcus Jones. You did draft Jack Jones. Uh, you have Sean Wade from Ohio State who just fell off a cliff. Remember that guy. <laughs> that was going to be uh, a, a – Him hurt. and um, – oh, what was his name? The guard, Wyatt. Um, Wyatt Davis. They both just yeah, fell Wyatt off Davis. a mountain. Um, so – the, the, the problem there, again, you're just missing a lot of depth at, at corner, especially now that um, Malcolm Butler is down. I believe he's down for the season, right, Warner? Yeah, yeah, he's on IR. Yeah, so. Or maybe, that, that, uh, they just released him, actually. They just released him and gave him compensation because uh, oh, yeah, I think he was on the pub list. And um, I think that was just either today or yesterday at the time of recording. Okay. Um, but you, you – you have great depth out of your safeties. You have too much depth, honestly. But um, <laughs> Devin McCourty, Kyle Duggar, I mean, honestly, Adrian Phillips can play linebacker or safety. A lot of these guys can play linebacker or safety. Kyle Duggar I mean, can play I linebacker. Almost, while making this, I almost wanted to put just Phillips and Jabril Peppers as that linebacker safety and just not have Jawan Bentley in there. Yeah, as a starter. I think that would be so fun. But I think I think you're going to see Bentley or Mac Wilson uh, when, they are, when they're in nickel. Um, ha- be the linebacker just because they need somebody a little bit bigger than Jabril Peppers and Adrian Phillips. Um, but in dime, Peppers is going to play a, a mean uh, dime, either slot defender or a linebacker. Right. And um, so, yeah, great depth out of your safeties. I, I think with your corners, and I think the reason why this team ranks so low is because they just <laughs> don't have any real playmakers or like, Big X factor out of this secondary. I guess that's the the best way to describe it. You don't have that big X factor out of your uh, out of any of your secondary players. And I think that is a weakness of the secondary. But uh, we we do like this room a lot. I think Belichick is going to elevate this room a lot. And um, I, if this is probably not going to be the twenty first best um, secondary, twenty first best pass defense in football next season. Yeah. But um. um I mean, just just to reiterate, Kyle Duggar is two twenty. He's six foot two, two twenty. Um, you're looking at two fifteen from um, Jabril Peppers in terms of weight. Um, <clears throat> Adrian Phillips is uh, weighing in. His official weight is two ten, and then you got guys like Mac Wilson who's two thirty, and uh, Jawan Bentley who is uh, two fifty five. So just just adding some beef in there is why I don't think Peppers will play uh, that second linebacker spot. Agree. Let's talk about this run defense room here. It's going to rank 10th in football with 8.10 grade. Uh, yeah, good luck running on this Patriots team here. And I feel like it, it's it's very – it's almost always that way when you're talking about a Bill Belichick yeah. coach uh, defense. Um, you, your DBs are elite at stopping the run. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be that much of a, a drop-off with – Terrence Mitchell, or even Jawan Williams will help out a lot. Miles Bryant is good at stopping the run as well. Kyle Duggar is, I mean, if you want to call him a safety, cool. He is an elite run-stuffing safety. And I think when you look at your front four, I think you have solid guys. More so on the interior. You're talking yeah. about Lawrence Guy, Devon. Uh, gotcha. I mean, you, I mean, again, the, another brilliant part about this defense is Judon Guy, Godshawn Wise are going to be your primary kind of down linemen. They're going to be going up against the offensive line almost every play, whether it's a run or a pass. But Josh Uche can come on a pass, can drop in coverage, but he's also a really – he's a good run defender as well. It just gives you another big body um, to to defend the run. Josh Uche um, is, you know, 23 years old, and and he, he weighs in at 245. So it just gives you more beef and ability to – play um, instead of running a strict four three it gives you flexibility between pass rush coverage and run defense where uh, you don't have to lean whether you know if you want more pass coverage or um, you know even pass rush and blitz ability you might put in a safety or, or a smaller linebacker but then that they become a liability in run defense Uche kind of plays that middle uh, where he's still a bigger guy still beefier guy is an edge coming out. Um, that is athletic enough to be that kind of safety type where he can drop into coverage but also play well against the run. 
just an overall really good run defense room. Yeah, and if you're in your base packages, Raquan, Raquan McMillan is a really good run stuffing linebacker as well. Adrian Phillips, Jabril Peppers are just studs in the run game as well. Yep. So um, you have just phenomenal depth here and, and, and really, really, really good run defense here. I think, honestly, it's your back seven or so that really elevates this room. I really hope that Christian Barmore can be the, the three down um uh, interior line yeah. defensive lineman that can you know rush rush the passer rush the pat rush the passer good lord um but you know take over some of the run stuffing abilities he he is I mean, a good run stuffing defensive tackle but I think uh Lawrence Guy and Devon Galchuk yeah. I probably you, you got that. you got two monstrous nose tackles in Lawrence Guy and Godja I mean you got Godja, I mean you, when you have those two guys why not save Barmore for second and third down just to rush the passer I mean on first down it should be pretty much Guy Godja when you're, they're not in the two minute drill almost every rep just to save save his energy save Barmore's energy and, and allow him to rush the passer more effectively but I do agree I hope he can um I, honestly, I don't. I don't even hope. I, I look forward to him uh, really developing his run defense ability. Um, you know, whether that's through hand placement, uh, just strong lower half and, and core being able to fill up space in that defensive front. Um, but I, I look forward to to that day when he can be that dominant three down uh, IDL. Absolutely. Let's wrap things up with this defense. Talk about their uh, strengths and weaknesses. You have the greatest and most innovative what defensive coach of all time, uh, the ghost that the, the ghost that rookie quarterbacks are gonna see for some reason when they rookie quarterbacks they face Bill Belichick. Um, it's Halloween they, 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 every day. It's Halloween. Um, Zach Wilson looked like the worst quarterback of all time when he faced the Patriots last season. Um, it, it happens to the wow. Best they of took us. this guy at number two. What? What? Um, uh, you, you had just phenomenal depth and you have an excellent scheme fit. And I do think you have a lot of upside on this defense as well. Um, you, you, I think we're more so talking about maybe that front seven. I'm not saying you don't have good depth in your back half as well, but I mean, good upside, but you do have really, really nice upside. Excluding the corners. Uh, yeah. Excluding the corners. And, and you'll see in the weaknesses. Oh, but also there's lack of upside. Why is that? Um, that's, that just goes to, you know, some of these guys are aging, you know who they are, but then you also have guys like Kyle Duggar, Christian Barmore um, on this defense that, I mean, the sky's the limit for these guys. Uh, so you know who a guy like Jabril Peppers is. You know who a guy, um, you you know who Dietrich Wise is. Uh, you, you, you know who Jawan Bentley is, but, uh, you know, you know who Devin McCourty is, but Kyle Duggar, um, <clears throat> Josh Uche, Anthony Jennings, Ronnie Perkins, Christian Barmore, uh, even Matt Judon. The sky's the limit for these guys. So a lot of upside, um, but also a lot of guys that that you know who they are and they they just have that consistent level of play that's kind of easily predictable. Uh, agreed. All right, let's wrap things up. Look at the final grade and notes here. So they're going to rank 16th, ranking 19th offensively, 15th defensively with, I think, upside to – be better on both ends of the ball, both sides of the ball. I keep saying ends, uh, but on both sides of the ball. Um, and then uh, looking at their schedule, their over-under is eight and a half. I think they'll hit over. I'm just not sure if it'll be enough to make the playoffs because, again, the AFC is just absolutely loaded. Um, but but there, I think we, we're going to have them go in nine and eight. Um but I'm just not sure if it's going to be enough to make the playoffs. We're going to lose week one at Miami for some weird reason. At Miami is like, is Bill Belichick's ghost that he can't get past, I guess, that are the Patriots' ghosts, I guess. They just can't beat Miami week one, and they can't beat them in Miami. Um, but they'll beat the Steelers, whether it's Mitchell Trubisky or uh, Kenny Pickett. They'll be seeing ghosts. Um, we're going to lose to the Ravens and the Packers. They're going to go on a, a mini win streak here, which is probably the easiest stretch of your schedule. Um, yeah. Week five against the Lions at home. Week six at Cleveland, but you're facing Jacoby Brissett. Week seven against the Bears, you're facing Justin Fields. And week eight against the, uh, I'm sorry, I guess week seven against the Bears. Week eight against the Jets, you're facing Zach Wilson. 
Um, so you should be able to win all four of those games. I would actually almost pencil this team in to win all four games. And then week nine against the Colts, we do have them lose. What'd you say? Forget that. Use a Sharpie. Right, use a, use a Sharpie. Eraser. You ain't erasing no Sharpie. <laughs> week nine against the Colts. Uh, we're going to have them losing to so go into the bye week five and four. So after a rough start, you kind of correct it heading into the bye week. Game in Indy. That's a tough game. Right, right on. Um, and then week 11 out of the bye, you're going to beat the Jets. They're going to beat the Vikings week 12. And then you kind of hit this back half of the schedule can get really, really nasty. Week 12 through 18, we gave them the win against the Vikings, but we got the Vikings, Bills, Cardinals, Raiders. That's a brutal stretch, week 12 through 15. After that, the, then the Bengals and then the Bills again in, in a, a week after the Dolphins. Right. I mean, so, And then they, you're in your last, what's that, seven games or so, you're only at home for three of them, and the, the road games are at Minnesota, at Arizona, at the Raiders, and at Buffalo. You can win a couple of those, and then you host the Bengals, you host the Bills, you host the Dolphins. I mean, yeah, it, you know, they could take one from the Bills. That's 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 a really that's a TBD, just because of how competitive the Patriots are, but how just good the Bills are. And I don't think we're gonna have a freak snow game again either. Um, yeah. So you could take one against the Bills. You could beat the Raiders and or the Bengals. You know, that's TBD. But you could also lose to a team like the Vikings or. or I think they dominate the Cardinals just because they're the, the fronts, offensive line and defensive line. I think they dominate the Cardinals. Um, but I think the Cardinals and the Dolphins are really their only um, surefire wins in that stretch. They can lose to the Vikings, but they can also beat teams like the Bills, Raiders, or, or Bengals. Yep. So we're going to have them going nine and eight here. So that's going to wrap up things on our end. But stick around. We do have our interview with Tim. So let's dive into that. 